Hello everybody, today we will talk about the difference between the distal bump and submersible bump. So you have to watch. Thank you. Like the name, a submersible bump is designed to be submerged in water, while the pedestal pump sits in the sump pit. But its motor is not designed to get wet, so it sits outside the pit. We have two main types of the submersible pump. The first type is well pump. A well pump is hung or suspended in a water well on a pipe, sometimes to depths past 1,000 feet. Well pumps are powered by AC voltage, but DC voltage is used on smaller pumps for low flows of water up to depths of 200 feet. The main sizes of well pumps are 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch, and 10 inch. The second type of the submersible pumps is the sump pump. This type is used in a pit or sump and sometimes just a lower area like a swimming pool cover or a fountain. Some pumps types are grinder pumps, effluent pumps, utility pumps, and bilge pumps. Some pumps are usually AC powered, but smaller bilge pumps for boats can be powered by DC voltage. Some pumps also are available in explosion proof. Now we will take an example for installing a submersible sump pump and a pedestal pump in a pit to check the difference between both of them. It's argued that the submersible pump placed on the bottom of the pit is more stable than the pedestal pump. With the pedestal pump, the pump is placed on the bottom of the pit, but the motor is placed on the outer side of the pit. Because the motor of the submersible pump is in the pit, so it's quieter than the pedestal pump. However, it's more expensive, and if the pump fails, it's harder to replace it, because it's stored deep inside the pit. The submersible pump does handle greater volumes of water and is built to handle solids or particles. The pedestal pump has a longer lifespan than the submersible pump. They are known to last two to five times longer and are cheaper than submersible pump. But they are not built to handle particles or solids of any kind. The pedestal style has a hose or pipe that reaches down into the bottom of the pit and sucks up anything in its surroundings to avoid the pump clogging. The pedestal float switch maintenance is on the outside of the pit, so it makes it easier to fix and maintain. However, this may be a safety risk for children and pits. Basically, there are pros and cons for each type of pump. Which pump is right for you and your family, dependence on your needs and your personal concerns. Here we are, here is a close up look at the sump pump. Sump pump's a really basic piece of equipment. You've got a big electric motor that runs a shaft down here like this. In the bottom, you've got slots in there that pick water up as an impeller it spins around. Water gets pumped up here, clamps on with like regular, you know, plumber's uh, clamps out onto the street or your backyard. This is the business end. It's really, really important. It's where a lot of your problems with your sump pump uh, happens to float, just like, uh, just like in your toilet, same thing. So what ends up happening, the sump's a, a big pit. Say it's, you know, just, you want to have your pump, your uh, sump coming on just underneath where the motor is. So you've got about a foot and a half, two feet of water uh, for this model before uh, you got to empty it. So what ends up happening, the water fills up, it lifts up this float like that. Now I'll show you what happens uh, where the switches are. This black rubber ring, this is what's going to trigger that switch up here. Watch what happens, I got it plugged in. So here we go, we're lifting up, there's your black rubber ring, comes up like this. <laughs> Uh, see that that one uh, shut it off so the switch is in the up position like that once that float drops back down that's what shuts off uh, the switch so big things you have going on with these is simple it's in a damp environment this one's actually only about a year old I switched out because it was loud because it's a cheap pump so they get corroded, and uh, that can cause problems. In here, you've got uh, bushings that can get corroded. They seize up. The pump stops working. Your basement gets flooded. But the biggest thing I ever see with people's sumps, including my own, because I've had my basement flood twice, is this shaft right here. 
It can get corroded. It can bind in this mechanism here. It doesn't slide properly. It can bind here and not slide properly just because of corrosion. If you have these rubbers put in the wrong spot, that's the other one there, it won't come on properly. You can flood your motor, then you know, you've wrecked the pump. Uh, the other big thing that I've seen happen with people is they put a cover over top of their sump. It's very, very common because it's a big hole. But if you've got that cover touching the shaft in any way whatsoever, or you put anything over top of that pit and block this, your pump won't come on. Guess what? You just got a flooded basement. And then finally, the last thing. These switches don't last forever. There's springs in here. Uh, they die after time. You can see this one's got rust on it already. Um, so that's the thing with this kind of pedestal style sump pump. They also make a submersible kind. It's about maybe that tall. All this mechanism is underwater. It's got waterproof switches in them. Uh, they're a little bit more money, probably double. Same kind of things apply to them. These things do not last forever. So you want to switch them out before you run into problems. I'd say a safe bet is every five years. Get rid of them, get a new one. And uh, lastly, they make these models too with battery backup and alarm. So, you know, you got a power outage, that'll flood your basement as well. If it's raining and the power's out for eight hours, that sump pump fills up, you got a flooded basement. So you can get them with battery backup and alarm. It can ping your cell phone and tell you, hey, your house is flooding. You can get home and deal with it. Uh, that's it for sump pumps. Really important piece of equipment. Let's say $250 to $500. You could be looking at a $20,000 bill on your insurance if you don't have this thing working right. That's it. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Recently, submersible pumps have gained good market shares in both the industrial and domestic sectors due to their high versatility and reliability. They need no priming, they are not prone to the issue of cavitation, and are very efficient. The submersible pump is a centrifugal pump. You can see how the impellers are throwing the water outwards. The impeller blades are the backwards curve type. Here, many of the impellers are connected onto a single shaft, and this shaft is driven by an induction motor. The water enters through the eyes of the impellers, and they are then thrown out radially due to centrifugal action. This way, the water particles gain both kinetic and pressure energy. Now we need to pass this outlet water to the next impeller efficiently. A stationary device, called a diffuser, is used for this purpose. You can see how the water flowing from the impeller enters the diffuser. The diffuser then deflects the inlet water and makes it ready for the next impeller stage. The next impeller is connected to the outlet of this diffuser. The series of connected impellers multiplies the pressure gain at each stage. This is the reason why submersible pumps produce a huge amount of pressure head. The water, so pumped, passes through an inbuilt non-slam check valve of the submersible pump. The issue of water hammer is effectively reduced by the non-slam check valve which is a huge issue in high altitude pumping. Now let's focus on the prime mover of a submersible pump. Generally, an induction motor is used to run the impellers. The power supply to an induction motor is given to the stator, which can be either single phase or three phase. The motor produces a lot of heat during operation, and due to this reason, the motor is either water or oil filled for effective cooling. The continuously circulating coolant jacket around the motor makes sure that the motor never overheats. You can see how a small impeller at the bottom maintains this circulating flow of coolant. The entire impeller motor assembly is immersed in the working fluid. This means that just as with conventional centrifugal pumps, priming is not needed in submersible pumps. Another major issue faced by normal centrifugal pumps is the issue of cavitation. One of the main reasons for this happening is the low pressure on the suction side. In submersible pumps, the water is pushed rather than pulled, and this reduces the chance of a negative pressure head in the system, and thus the issue of cavitation does not occur. The high pressure head, flow rate characteristics, and the ability for it to be immersed completely in the water makes submersible pumps an ideal choice for bore well lifting, firefighting, and oil well lifting.
90% of the oil wells in the world require some kind of artificial lift to achieve an economic flow rate. There is no narrow flow region in the impeller and diffuser section of submersible pumps, and this fact also makes submersible pumps the ideal choice for wastewater pumping and lifting highly viscous fluids.